a regular meeting on September 19th at 6.37 p.m. Roll call, please. Commissioner Bernardo? Commissioner Brennan? Here. President Ciancarelli? Present. Commissioner All Lorenz? Right. Here. Commissioner Matouche, and can I ask if you have an agenda posted at the door of the place that you're staying? Yes, and I sent a picture to uh, Steve McGraw. And is there any members of the public there? Yes, there is. Okay, thank you. And there's a quorum in San Mateo County. Right. Okay, great. So we have a quorum. Um, and I'm going to open it up now to public comment for items that are not on the agenda. Um, we have one here. And then, Tom, are there any people, you know, members of the public, where you are, who are who wish to make a public comment? No, they're shaking their head. I do have a slip that I can give later if I may. Um, I was just curious that the meeting is published to be 6.30, and one of the responsibilities of the commissioners are to abide by the voters, that they, the commissioners that have been voted in, to respect their roles and make sure they are present at the meetings and on time, and also be prepared and read their materials. Um, I noticed that in the past few months that I've been here, uh, one of the commissioners, and sometimes two, they do not show up at all, or they show up very late. And I think it's a responsibility of the commissioners when we have a meeting to send an email to the district and say whether they're going to be late or they're not coming, rather than making us wait for them to come. And the other item is to be prepared, read their material, bring the, the packet that has been mailed to them uh, present. I just noticed that I went to look at the public packet and somebody has taken that and the public does not have a packet here. And I think somebody, one of the commissioner, I believe I just saw Ms. Brown and uh, picked up the public ma uh, packet. And that to me is very uh, upsetting because that means the person is not prepared and does not have the packet that the district has uh, provided for that individual. So I'd like some, or, you know, some um, issues to be addressed and people take this job very seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask you one more time, Tom, if there is any member of the public there. If not, I'm going to close public comment. There's a member of the public here that does not choose to make a comment. In fact, they walked out. Okay, so I'm going to close public comment now and go to item B2, which is commissioner comments.
I wanted to mention is Governor Brown um, signed a bill two days ago, and I'm very excited about this bill. It's one that I wrote letters of support for, and it will um, allow special districts to now do the same thing that city councils have already been able to do, and that is um, institute a districting commission or redistricting commission, and that's related to um, districts that have, uh, or I guess I should say public agencies that have district-based elections. So going forward, um, the process that we saw in Menlo Park for that city council where they transitioned to district-based elections um, and used a uh, citizen-driven committee, that process will be um, something that special districts will be able to do going forward. So after the census comes out, um, hopefully this district will have an opportunity to engage the citizens in a more robust process, um, and I think that's exciting. So if anybody wants more information, um, you can click the Senate bill, it's at the top page, or top post, I should say, of my Facebook page, um, which is a public page. So, uh, or you can certainly phone or email me, um, and I'd be happy to talk about it. Thanks. Great, thank you, Ed. Thank you. Well, first I'd like to, uh, to say a few words about our operations director. The Twilight um, Committee meets with quite a few members of the public almost every month, and almost every month after those meetings, we, we have a few people come to me to claim many al allocates for John. And this month in particular, people were talking to me outside the district, asking me how we get such a great operation manager because we've, we've been emails, every month I get emails and, I, and John, you know, I send them to you and say, here's, here's something that's happening at the harbor that, that's easy for you guys to fix and he's on it right away and he's used one of the best things is that people tell me is that, they, that he's a great person with the public because he does things right away, he interacts with them and if, if uh, someone has a, an issue and misunderstands Also this month, I attended the uh, Greater Fairlawn National Wing Sanctuary Advisory Council meeting. Um, Steve McGraw was there. Um, also in October, I'll be going to the third annual Wildlife Disturbance Symposium. It's going to be held in Monterey. I've gone. This will be the third year I've gone. It's a multi-agency meeting. folks attend, so it's a, a really great collaborative meeting, and I'll, I'll usually bring back things for our committee meetings. And it's a place where we share, share our, our experiences and try to learn from them and then look for solution, common solutions. It's a great place to, to find answers to some of the problems, because you know, what we see here is not just what we see here, we see it all over the, the water in California. Oh yes, I'd like to have a re uh, just request that that the property that we're thinking of buying, if we could if we could uh, have a site visit maybe next month, we can talk about all the all of the uh, aspects of that property and actually see them. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Oh.
No, no comments right now. Thank you. Okay, I have a few comments. Um, I attended the Fish and Fleet event on Saturday, and it was just bursting over with people, and it was wonderful to see people having fun, great music, great food. The Harbor District was a proud sponsor, and we had our staff here. I saw Anita and Debbie and our obviously our Harbor Patrol staff. I think I saw John walking back to his car as I was driving, so I'm sorry I missed you, John, but I just want to thank the staff for doing a great job putting it together on our booth and representing the Harbor District very well. Um, I also want to congratulate and thank Commissioner Brennan for that equal pay issue. I know you've been working so hard on that, and it came in on September 5th, I think, when we did the CBRA meeting, just in time for that meeting. A great job, and um, I am glad that we were able to you brought it, you brought it up at the August meeting, and that we were able to at least I don't know if they had any real impact, but maybe they heard us. I think what, what we did was important, and I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. And yeah. can you thank Karen too, Karen Klein, and who submitted the public comment via letter? Oh. She's been very helpful. I'll oh, definitely pass that on. Well, congratulations. Yeah, you. thank you. We're, we're very, very excited. Well, keep us posted if there's anything else that we, we can do to support that. Yeah, we're going to, there's going to be more coming, so I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you and congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. And then um, I have to apologize to Ed Lorraine for missing a couple of our meetings, the Wildlife Protection Committee and Nutrient Punishment. I had a personal medical emergency, but we didn't do that. We back to October. So we have a lot of things to look forward to. And that is all the comments that I have. So uh, we will go to the consent. Uh, Commissioner Chenkron, sure. you, would you mind mentioning in public comment the upcoming special meeting on oh. the 24th? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, so I guess, should I just mention our meeting? Yes. Your, okay, so on September 11th, um, I have. Uh, uh, I'll just, there's a Special meeting on you called a special meeting a special for meeting September twenty fourth. September twenty fourth, so that we as a commission and this is just everything's happening so quickly, um, can discuss the personnel issues that we're facing at the chief executive level. So that meeting will be held at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock in South City. In this, let us in, know. In this in this building, building. It's confirmed in the Betty Weber room. Okay. Um, can, can I chime in? That is when the CSDA conference is oh. taking place. And oh. I'm going to be at the CSDA. I always go to the CSDA conference. Okay. Is there a way we can do it? Um, can you call me? That's a possibility. Why don't you? Because we have to get this at least started so that we understand what direction we want to go. I'll be there with all of the people who. Tom, are you there? Are you there, Tom? Commissioner Matouche? Yeah. Next Monday. Okay. 
I haven't talked to Robert, but right now let's just keep it on Monday. And then I, Sabrina, let's when we, let's, we, if we could change it, let me talk, can you and I talk offline? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. Cool. And Commissioner Brennan, if it works out for you to be able to call in, uh, Debbie or I will be in touch and we'll talk about the logistics of that and the posting of the agenda and getting the address. Okay. Okay, so then let's let's at least settle that right now. And if we go to the um, item C, which is the consent calendar now. Um, anyone want to remove anything on the consent calendar? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. Oh, I want to remove <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, seven, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, seven, and nine. So, um, Eddie? Uh, no. Okay. Tom? Uh, motion to approve 6, 8, 10, and 11. And 12? Tom, there, there are 12 items on the consent. Ah, uh, and 12. Okay, I didn't see that one. Yeah. Uh, the motion to approve 6, 8, 10, 11, and 12. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, roll call, please. President Shankarelli? Aye. Commissioner Bernardo? Sorry. Commissioner Lorenz? Aye. Commissioner Matouche? Aye. Commissioner Brennan? Aye. Okay, the motion carries. So let's um, start with. Well, now we're in the regular part of the agenda, which is um, item 13. And, but I want to put the um, bills and claims, which has been removed from the consent calendar, as the first item right now, because it's something that we have to uh, approve so that we can operate from our district. So, Sabrina, you had you removed that item, so. Um, yeah, I just was wondering if we could get an update. I understand that I think um, there's a lot of uh, legal fees expected related to ongoing, I don't even know what to call it. What do we call it? Uh, well, Commissioner Brennan, uh, you will see a legal fees revised handout. There are two, am two amendments to bills and claims. Um, So um, the first thing is in the actual bills and claims, while it didn't change the number at all, uh, South San Francisco Scavenger had been uh, incorrectly placed under Pillar Point instead of Oyster Point and amended uh, 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 bills and claims sheet has been distributed highlighting that move. Uh, thanks to Treasurer uh, Commissioner Matouche for noticing that error. Secondly, yes, uh, the uh, legal fees sheet that you have in the package has been updated as well. Anticipating this question, the legal fees uh, spreadsheet in the package. Minute, isn't there one? Um, yeah, in the package was um, uh, uh, good through uh, June of 18. But anticipating this question, I asked our accounting manager to update it to reflect uh, bills received through August of 2018. So it's current as of August 2018, even though um, uh, there is a request in bills and claims to pay a couple of those bills this evening. Oh, I see a tiny print at the bottom through August 2018. Yes. Um, Commissioner Brennan, I, I would remind the board that the details of legal fees are uh, a privilege and the board as a whole can, uh, only the board could uh, vote to waive that privilege. 
I think it is fair to say that we, uh, as the board of the public knows, had a couple of issues that have um, added to our legal fees uh, currently. Uh, one would be the uh, district's elections, and one would be the arbitration that we're going through. So those have had a, an impact on the legal fees. Um. Yes. That'll help. I'd like you to kind of get a handle on it. Is it possible to see those in print form for like the last 12 months? Because I know we get them in print form. Uh, we just started switched it over to digital. Uh, have we done that yet? You asked for that to be the most recent, but we can provide hard copies. Yes, of anything I've, I've still got uh, hard copies going back 12 months. Okay. I think it is. Um, it's just easier to look at. Okay. Right? That's why I asked. Yes. And also, um, while we're on the topic, though, uh, I'm not sure if this was one of the ones that got pulled. Um, no, the financial, the fourth quarter financial reports didn't get pulled, but it's worth noting that uh, in 2017-18 fiscal year, we actually came in um, both under what we spent in 16-17 and under budget on legal fees. Um, so I'll just point that out as well. Well, but yes, happy some of us, some of us think the budget's a little too high for legal fees, but I, okay. <laughs> I understood. Understood. If you would uh, give us some notice, uh, and we'll start pulling all those together. It's not early, so okay. just let me know. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Motion to approve. Okay. Well, Tom, do you have any comments? I'm, uh, I've got a slow internet connection. I was trying to see the revised bills and claims. Steve, uh, did that include that scavenger yes. correction? Yes, sir. That was, that, that was the correction in revised bills and claims, sir. All right. Um, I have reviewed bills and claims, and I'm uh, making a motion to accept bills and claims in the amount of $481,628.24 which includes $276,028.57 pre-approved on August 15, 2018, and $205,823.67 approved on September 19. Uh, so I would also request as part of that same motion, pre-approved 350,000 adults and claims until next meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Matush. Commissioner Matouche? Tom? Yeah. Aye. Commissioner Lorenis? Aye. President Chancarelli? Aye. Commissioner Brennan? Aye. The motion carries. Um, thank you. The other item on here that probably needs our attention is item 13. I'll go back to the other consent items. These are just the money issues. And that is for. Um, the regular discussion and its engineering services for the pilot surfer's beach restoration project. John Moran, please take the way. Good evening, Commissioners. This is a motion to authorize the general manager pursuant to a request for proposals, response, evaluation from qualified firms and or individuals to assist the San Mateo County Harbor District on engineering services for the pilot surfer's beach uh, restoration project to execute a special services agreement with the highest ranked firm, ESA, for the amount of $105,000 and subject to continued due diligence and verification of insurance and other obligations outlined in the RFP, award the contract to ESA, establish a contract contingency in the amount of 10% of the negotiated contract amount for unanticipated additional expenses associated with the contract and authorize the general manager to issue change orders up to the <coughs> contingency amount. A little background on the Surface Beach Project for those uh, members of the public that may not be familiar with it. The district initiated the pilot Surface Beach pro Restoration Project to protect and restore the shoreline at Surface Beach and to address the shoaling that has occurred inside Pillar Point Harbor. The project will result in relocating clean sand 
that has accumulated inside the Toy Point Harbor East Breakwater over the past 56 years to the adjacent Surfers Beach for beneficial reuse. The scope of work for this project engineering special services agreement includes all necessary engineering support for the project, including development and evaluation of conceptual design alternatives, permitting, construction plans, technical specifications, and construction support. Surfers Beach has suffered from significant beach and bluff erosion attributed in large part to the construction of the Pillar Point Harbor out of breakwater, completed in 1961. The project is necessary to remove sand that is built up inside the harbor and to reduce the threat of structural damage and recreation loss along Surfers Beach. This project will also address the issues associated with shoaling that has occurred inside of the harbor since the outer breakwater was constructed. The San Mateo County Harbor District Board of Commissioners recognized the benefits of this project and unanimous, unanimously approved this pilot project at the October 7, 2015 board meeting. In February of 2016, the district submitted a grant application to the Division of Boat and Waterways for $800,000 to, to fund the project. <clears throat> uh, the grant request was approved in July 2017. The district also successfully applied for funding through Ocean Protection Council for up to $75,000 uh, for the necessary planning and design costs. Staff initiated an RFP to obtain bids on the design engineering for this project. Responding firms were found to be highly qualified, however, based on all of the RFP evaluation criteria and through careful analysis, it was clear ESA ranked higher overall. In accordance with the RFP, staff entered into good faith negotiations with the highest ranked firm and were able to negotiate a reduced cost. Staff recommends the board approve the general manager entering, in, entering into an agreement with ESA for the design engineering of the project in accordance with the aforementioned motion. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you.
Tom, are you there? I, I put on mute to make sure that there wasn't any ancillary noise while uh, we were talking. I totally support this entire project. Something that all of us have been looking forward to for a long time. It's very positive for the entire Harbor District and for uh, the community with regard to Highway 1. Uh, things that we've got going on regarding climate change, <coughs> uh, all these different problems that we worry about during the storms in the winter. So I totally support this program. Great, thanks. So I agree with fellow commissioners and I know there's been a lot of time and effort put into this but I also have to give a shout out to former commissioner Nicole David who um, who has been instrumental in working to get Brad on board and you know dealing with transitions so I want to I want to commend her for her support of this very early on um, I, when I first got on the commission I was appointed to this committee and she was so, um, you know, getting me caught up, but also uh, you know, working with uh, Brad, I think she was well. But I also want to commend the commissioner, this commission, for um, moving forward with this. And of course, the um, only two of them could have done this without me. could never have done this without me, so thank you. So is there a motion to authorize the general manager um, pursuant to a request of proposal, respond to evaluation from qualified firms and or individuals to assist the San Mateo County Harbor District on engineering services for the pilot Surfers Beach Restoration Project to execute a special services agreement with the highest ranked firm, ESA, for the amount of $105,000 and subject to continued due diligence and verification of insurance and other obligations outlined in the RP, award the contract to ESA and two, establish a contract contingency in the amount of 10% of the negotiated contract amount for unanticipated additional expenses associated with the contract and authorize the general manager to issue change orders up to the contingency amount. So moved. So moved. So you want a second, Tom? Sabrina moved. I'll second. Great. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Brennan? Aye. Commissioner Matouche? Commissioner Matusha. Aye. Commissioner Lorenz. Aye. President Shankarali. Aye. And the motion carries. Um, we are going to now go to item B, which is um, items that were pulled off of the consent. We approved item one, which was pulled off, and that was the golden plate. And so now we're going to item two. So we're going to have to pull these off. So I don't know if we uh, have to do each individually, but um, well, you can pull them off if you don't want to, we can do them all together. I just pulled it because I want to abstain, not because oh, okay. I want to talk about them. I just want to abstain. For all of them? For all the minutes. Okay. Ed, did you, did you want so to abstain? So let's make a motion for no, two, okay. three, four, five. Okay. Okay. So um, you want to make a motion in Sabrina to approve the minutes? Or I, I can make a motion for you to I can make the motion. Sabrina made the motion to add second 
Vice Dean Volkoff. Commissioner Lorenis. Aye. President Ciancarelli. Aye. Commissioner Brennan. Abstain. Commissioner Matouche. Tom. Commissioner Matouche. Tom? Uh, I couldn't hear what was being said. We're voting on Sabrina's motion to approve the minutes, and Ed seconded. And you're the vote now. Your turn to vote. Okay. Aye. Okay, so the motion carries. Okay. Um, yeah, approved. Yep. Um, Okay, so item nine is Dora Lorenz, Capital Projects, update. And seven as well. And seven, yes, yeah. sorry. Oh, sorry. Actually, let's do item seven, which is um, the fourth quarter of the year 2018 rent report. Anita? Um, I, don't, I don't have a presentation. Yeah. Is there a question or comment? Yeah, Sabrina, you pulled off seven. It's informational only. Do you have any questions for Anita? Just you can talk to ask. So, I was hoping that Anita could, um, or somebody could um, explain to me. Sorry. Um, you still have this. Explain to me how much lease revenue the district is receiving each quarter um, at District of Marina. It's, uh, it's in the attachment of the quarter four uh, the spreadsheet that's attached to the staff report. Okay, I'm looking at that. Yeah, and if you look down to the lessee revenues. Oh, okay. see Pillar Point Harbor. Oh, here it is. OPM okay. is first, yes. Uh, I mean, OPM is under the Pillar Point Harbor total. And then if you look at the lease total for OPM for quarter four, lease revenue. Could you, Tom, can you meet your please? Could you kind of sum it up for me? Because I'm not really sure what I'm looking at here. Okay, so if you look at the quarter four column, yep. and at the uh, it says base rent, and then if you look at, on the left, the Oyster Point Marina, the lessee total is $17,494 for quarter four. For quarter three, it was $18,223. This was for fiscal year 2018. So the, oh, I see OPM total at the bottom. Yes. So for? for? For lease revenue and then for caps, the commercial activity permits, and then there's the total. Okay, so so for quarter four, Yes. we earned? $17,494, the lease revenue from Oyster Point Marina. Well, what's the, I'm confused because I'm seeing the 28,000. The twenty-eight thousand includes the commercial activity permits. Oh, where's the seventeen thousand? Above the. Oh, I see. Sixteen thousand nine hundred eighty-six dollars. Okay. That's seventeen four ninety-four. Seventeen four ninety-four, which is for Oyster Point Marina, the lease revenue for quarter four. I don't know why I'm not seeing. So go go left two columns from sixteen oh, nine eighty six. Okay. Oh, I was looking at fourth quarter total. Okay. So so that is that consistent every quarter that we're receiving seventeen thousand dollars. Well, the Oyster. quarter the quarter before we received eighteen thousand. Quarter three is right next to the seventeen. So it's roughly about the same. Yeah, it's about every the same quarter. now. Okay. Yes. So what's the variance? It, is that easy? Variance from when? 18 to 17. Very, very minimal. I know, but what's causing that? I'm just curious. Oh, well, it looks like for Oyster Point Yacht Club, they ended up giving us $858 versus the 1586 in quarter four. And that's all based on how much percentage rent. It's based on their contract because they reduced the amount based on their, their revenue coming in that month or that quarter. Okay, so the Yacht Club is paying 
they, they, they eight paid eight hundred and fifty eight dollars a quarter. They paid eight hundred and fifty eight dollars in quarter four, made fifteen hundred and eighty six dollars in quarter three. And and that and that's because of the percent rent. Right. So if they're selling alcohol or they're leasing out the space or something like that. Right, how much they are. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so that's such a small number, the seventeen thousand compared to what we what was the what what was it before we disposed of the properties that we used to lease there? Well, um, 1718 fiscal year, we ended up getting a total of $129,000 for Oyster Point Marina in lease revenues compared to $309,000 the year before in 1617. So we, we've taken a major hit there. Because of the leases that have been terminated, yes. Yeah, that's, that's something that our district hasn't, you know, we haven't talked about that. Um, and I, we can't talk about it now because it's not on the agenda, but. I think we do need to talk about that because that is a big shift um, in in lease revenue, and it's there's no plan for how we're going to regain that loss at this point that I'm aware of. Well, I appreciate you explaining that to me. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Tom, any other questions on the fourth quarter fiscal year? Um, 2018 written report. I was just curious about things like uh, Michael Mann is no longer in business. At what point do we erase that line item? Uh, which one are you talking yeah, about? Michael, sorry? Michael Mann, when there's no uh, revenue, I mean, it's like $72 in 1618 and you know, no revenue this year. So as soon as as soon as there's nothing to report in any of those columns, it will drop off. Oh, okay. So next next time it'll yeah. drop off. Yes. Did you hear that? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No. Can you mute your phone, Tom, please? Okay. There aren't any other questions, so we'll just accept that as an information item. Thank you, Anita. And then we'll go to Thank you. You're welcome. And we'll go to John Lorenz for report on the monthly capital project for your update. And so we have to pull back. So I just yeah, I just pulled it. Um, I know we've already talked about the project that we approved spending money on tonight. Um, but I just wondered if there were any like new developments or anything that you any highlights that you wanted to share with us. Uh, yes, the, the Romeo Pier demolition project, uh, which began with underwater avian surveys and hazmat abatement May 26th, uh, with the first barge arriving June 7th, um, the, uh, the demo began in earnest. The Half Moon Bay Airport brought up concerns uh, with the uh, concerns about the crane height. Um, they questioned our consultant's 189 foot maximum height threshold calculations. Um, so it was quite a challenge. Um, we were able to work through that challenge. And um, just this week, we've uh, found, we've learned that all of the, uh, the materials, the debris, have been sifted through. Um, all that was done after the, the uh, pier was actually demolished and put on barges. It was all taken into the bay. And um, at which time it's, it's been for months now, been sifted through and, um, and disposed of properly. The, the debris was all weighed, and those weigh tickets have been submitted to us um, along, with, along with the final um, invoice um, and a request for approval of the final completion. Um, we're reviewing all those very thoroughly now, and it appears um, with our consultant's assistance um, that everything is in order and um, the project which remarkably uh, for 2.3 million dollar very large project only had two um, change orders one of which was a deductive change order so it was in our favor and the second was only is under six thousand uh, dollars the calculations that Moffat Nickel our consultant 
um, design and engineering consultant did with regard to um, the debris weight and how much the um, project in itself should cost, um, again, came out remarkably accurate. It was only 20 tons out of 565 tons total, it was only 20 tons off, and um, which resulted in the entire project coming in at just um, $16,000 more than um, what we had estimated. So it's, um, we're excited that this project is coming to a, to a successful conclusion. Uh, bids for the Pillar Point Harbor sidewalk expansion project were open on July 11th, and the winning bid was brought to the board for approval. The winning bidder, Golden Bay Construction, was awarded the contract and began construction on schedule um, just this Monday. Uh, we had postponed their beginning the project because of um, Fish and Fleet, the big event that actually actually occurred on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, okay, I taste after. I met Sunday, the 16th. Which, which, our, which our staff at Pillar Point Harbor um, did an excellent job with in preparation and assisting the Half Moon Bay Seafood Marketing Association. Um, so the, the project, um, as you, you're probably all aware, because I know our commissioners are very, very involved in our, uh, their Pillar Point and Oyster Point. Um, and as you've observed, the um, construction started first thing Monday morning as we had demanded of the, the contractor and we had it all organized to allow them to begin. They did start some, some soft marking on the concrete um, prior, but the project began in earnest Monday morning, and they've already um, made considerable progress. We're hoping to get the project completed um, be, um, before um, the scheduled maximum time of 60 days. Uh, the project does include not only the expansion of the sidewalk itself in front of the retail uh, restaurant area, but also includes um, expanding the um, and continuing the sidewalk where it now breaks along Johnson Pier. Um, and the sidewalk in front of the restaurant will include and make, um, make it where the, it can be a combined use of uh, restaurant seating along with uh, ADA compliant widths um, of the sidewalk for pedestrian traffic. Um, likewise, the, the sidewalk along the <coughs> sidewalk, sidewalk and the cutouts, the ramps going, um, transitioning from uh, parking lot entries uh, along the sidewalk, all that will also <coughs> be ADA compliant. We're also repaving, uh, resurfacing, and striping all of the parking lot between the Harbor Master's office and the retail center which um, will enable us to, to get additional uh, ADA parking places. And um, uh, we're going to also repair two um, stormwater pipes that have collapsed. Uh, we've added that into the project as well with commissioner uh, approval. Um, those stormwater pipes uh, were identified by RCD um, in a related project. Could you uh, bring us up to date on West Shoreline Trail? I think that's on here somewhere. Yeah. It is. It's right on the side of the beach. Yeah. The West Trail um, project initiated or originated um, because of the erosion that um, actually caused part of the, the trail to be closed and um, subsequently um, GHD, our consultant, had to um, uh, postpone the reinforcement of the of the shoreline there in order to to um, dig and um, and place a culvert underneath of the, the trail, then backfill the trail to make it operable again. Um, they've um, you know, through a very arduous process, we had um, and multiple public meetings and. Uh, and discussion, we had asked GHD to come up with uh, or to present alternatives for the shoreline protection. The shoreline protection alternative that was chosen um, was uh, had more support than it uh, ended up 
having later, after given, uh, everyone given more thought to it, including the California Coastal Commission. The California Coastal Commission now has, um, has re-looked at that alternative and, um, and determined that more uh, research and looking into uh, other alternatives was prudent. So they've directed us to look at other alternatives with an emphasis on uh, living shoreline options. So that's where we're at now. Did you have anything else, or was that? No, not really. We're, we're moving along with an aggressive capital improvement uh, plan, and uh, we're moving along with yeah, all the so projects and the, the, as quickly as we can. The uh, sidewalk groundbreaking is wonderful. I mean, I remember even before I got elected to this board, um, the public members coming in asking for that and to, to um, start to, to uh, chip away at our long, long list of um, ADA improvements that we need to make is really critical to the district. And I know recently I read that um, some law firm from out of the area had, had um, uh, threatened a lawsuit with the, one of the businesses across the street from the harbor. I don't know if you read about that. But, um, you know, it was because they didn't have a wheelchair going into the cafe across from the harbor. What's that cafe called? Cafe, used to be Cafe Classique. Everybody's, everybody's still calling it Cafe Press. Classique. But press. 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 The press. And and when I read that article in the review, I thought, we got to get on this stuff. And then it's happening. So I'm really happy that we're making improvements there. And it's going to be great to have more outdoor seating and you know safe ADA access. So and the striping of the parking lot is going to be a big improvement and replacing those stormwater pipes um, you know that the RCD worked hard to, to uh, research for us is, is really exciting so thank you for the update under the under the commissioner's direction we've um, we've finally been able to get that project started which I've heard many um, positive comments yes. from our uh, from our tenants and, and the public, and everyone is, is very excited and very appreciative of the of the commissioners for um, for their support and um, and direction to the staff. I also like to say that the general manager has uh, been instrumental in um, in moving that along, and with um, our successful completion of the um, ADA transition plan, uh, which I was able to um, participate in under his direction, which allowed us to. Um, identify a lot of our shortcomings and with every project that we're addressing now under the Commission's direction we are um, correcting these uh, these ADA deficiencies. That's great. So I have one, one other question if I may. Yeah. And that is can you tell me a little bit more about the Phil Point Parker RV Park and Restroom project? It was just one sentence here that I refer that to the general manager. He's more familiar with that project. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Lorenos. Yes, um, the, f the funding part of that, we have been focusing on our discussions with uh, the Coastal Conservancy who have concerns about the proximity of the site for uh, 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 possible uh, for, for storm damage and sea level rise. Mm -hmm. um, so they are not supportive of it despite uh, the best efforts of the district, the uh, City of Half Moon Bay, and even the Coastal Commission who are supportive of the project. Uh, so we continue to look at that and try to find solutions to uh, location and funding both. Okay, thank you. No. Tom, do you have any comments or questions about um, John Moran's activity report for this month? No, it's uh, information only for things that are already in progress. Uh, John, thank you for the work you do and the detail that you provide. Uh, I think it's further exemplified by the number of people that have tremendous things to say about you. You're on the ball, and we appreciate your every effort. And I concur with, I concur with that. And I, um, 
want to let me know, John, you've probably obviously heard the feedback regarding the, the sidewalk um, expansion project. When I was at Fish and Fleet on Sunday, I you know, ran into some of the tenants about something that they were Actually, uh, President Chancarelli, that was the monthly capital projects update on the consent agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm if, sorry. We move, if we're moving through the agenda, uh, next item would be any commissioner requests for future agenda items. Yeah. I don't know why I said that because all of my papers are like, not in the normal order. So thank you for the approval. Can you please mute? We're, we're getting a lot of back noise. Commissioner Chancarelli, maybe it, it, it might help, and it might help uh, Commissioner Matouche particularly if you turned on your mic. Uh, but but to, to recap the discussion, um, we're talking about the lot that the board uh, approved uh, me to continue discussions. Uh, and as it says in my activity report, there will be a comprehensive update at the October meeting. And I'm hearing uh, uh, the desire for a special meeting prior to that to include a site visit and I'll work with the president on uh, finding a, an acceptable date for everybody to meet there and uh, look at the site. And can I just chime in that um, I just checked the, the week before, which would be the 10th, 
you know, if, we, if it was one week before our regular meeting. And that's, that's when the Coastal Commission hearing is happening. And normally I don't go to the Coastal Commission hearing when it's out of area, it's in San Diego um, in October, but I do have to be there regarding um, the Committee for Equity and Women's Surfing. So if we could, if we could schedule it around the Coastal Commission meeting, uh, other than the Coastal Commission meeting, I'm, I'm totally flexible. When are, when are you back? Because you're probably going to be on the 9th, or like, when are you actually leaving? The 9th um, or the 10th? The meeting starts on, yeah, so I have to leave on the 9th, but I wouldn't leave in the, I mean, I would leave in the evening, most likely, on the 9th. Okay, so either the 9th or the 11th. Are you getting back on the 10th tomorrow? So you're getting back on the 10th? Um, the Coastal Commission is a three day meeting, so I'll be, I'll be, I'll definitely be available on Monday the 8th and Friday the 12th, and then the week before, I'm also available. So if so, Monday the 8th is um, Columbus Day, so that's probably a holiday. Um, or we could look at doing it on, um, yeah, we could do it on the 9th, because it's a daytime thing, yeah. you know. Tom? 9th would be good, because that would save you a trip. Yeah, we would have our, yeah. our two committee meetings. Tom, are you available on the 9th to do a site visit? And we can have to pull Robert too. I mean, we can do this on one too. No, I'm not available October 9th. Okay. Okay. Let's, um, and I don't know about Robert, but let's tentatively schedule it for that day so we can even work it out. I, have to, I think it's an important thing for us. If we're going to make that kind of a commitment, financial commitment, And you're available on the 12th, right, Sabrina? I am available on the 12th. Okay. Okay, Tom. Um, we'll just I'll just work with the general manager to figure that out based on the schedules. If everyone's okay with that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, any future agenda items for you, Ed? Yes, I would like to. Uh, that's one agenda item. But sure what uh, you said Commissioner Chancarelli but for our policy if a commissioner wishes to see something on the agenda uh, if we could get just a consensus or even a, a vote of the board to put that on the agenda then that makes things uh, a lot easier. Well it sounds like what Ed was proposing is um, whatever comes out of the Climate Change Resiliency Committee and the Wildlife Protection Committee those okay. recommendations. Okay. It would um, be it would be just a, like a recommendation from the committee to go on to the agenda, right? Yes. Yeah. So. It's well, not recommendation, recommendations and and reporting back to the commission what we've been up to. Yeah, yeah but I mean. I understand. I understand, and that makes absolute sense, mm -hmm. and we'll make sure that when you're ready, that gets on the agenda. Yeah. That that's. Okay, Tom, do you have any yeah. agenda items that you would like on future? No, I'm, I'm good at this moment. Okay, then um, we can move on to item G, and it's information only unless any commissioners would like um, to ask questions yeah. the general manager of this report. Um, Sabrina? Yeah, I had a few questions. So, what number is it? Number um, is the very end.
jump tag of big wave. After the news of the uh, after, after the discussion item was was uh, uh, mentioned in the newspaper, I did get a phone call from Jeff Peck of Big Wave. I had been familiar with the project minimally. Met with uh, Mr. Peck on site, reviewed plans, um, and uh, he wanted to discuss the possibility of a uh, the district's administrative headquarters being located in his development. Um, uh, at first blush, I haven't gone very deep into that, uh, what the cost might be. Um, I did note that the, um, my particular uh, takeaway was that we would have comparatively little control over who our neighbors might be and with the zoning. It's, it is, we could be, for example, in a space in between um, a car detail shop and a welding shop. And um, I will be mentioning this in a little more detail in the October staff report mentioned in the paragraph above. Um, and I'll try to find out some, a little more information and pursue that a little further and get some direction from the board at that time. My understanding, Commissioner Brennan, is that he's breaking ground later this year. Um, and then, um, could you could you explain to us, like, how? Because you say your positive discussion with Caltrans related to this lot next to Sam's Chatterhouse. Could you give us some more information about the positive discussion? <coughs> Uh, again, Commissioner Brennan will be a comprehensive update at the uh, October meeting, but in brief, I did uh, check with a uh, senior engineer with Caltrans to determine whether there were any fatal flaws or uh, unusual constraints associated with this site and was informed that the major issue would be uh, ensuring that uh, vehicles exiting the site would have sufficient site distance which is a uh, formula specifically related to the speed of the road onto which the cars would be uh, uh, entering. When we do the site visit, that's one of the things I want to try to visualize because that lot's kind of up on a bank, you know? Um, would it be possible to get more information about how that would be dealt with? And then also I noticed in the drawing that it only shows 24 parking spots. Um, can we get more information about if we build a parking garage underground, if that would be in the, um, like problematic for tsunami inundation or sea level rise? It's, I don't know the elevations, so it's hard for me to figure that out. Because 24 parking spots isn't gonna be enough, so I'm wondering if we could go understood that the 24 parking spaces is not sufficient and um, that drawing was actually superseded by the one that was in your board packet uh, last time that I think included 38 parking spaces but I'll confirm that and bring that back to you at the October meeting. Could, could we find out about whether it's possible to go underground? We can take a look at uh, I work in the construction industry and um, 
these are details that we would definitely need to have a lot of clarity on before we make that kind of investment. I don't know what they're, I don't know what, what's the price of this property, by the way? We don't know that yet, and when we get to that point, uh, if the board wishes to pursue the project, then I would certainly uh, suggest that we schedule closed session for discussions around right. price so and they terms. Don't have a, they don't have it listed for sale, put the price on it. There is no current active list, uh, right. listing. This is discussions just between the owner and the district. Um, so let me get back to a concern in terms of timing for the agenda. If we have this, I mean, we can. We're looking at possibly doing the site visit on October 20th. Our meeting is October 17th. Is that going to be too late? So well, we can do anything with the agenda unless you want to ask questions about the October 17th meeting? Oh, I thought we said the site visit might be on the, sorry, let me get back October to October 12th. October 12th, that way we would have a little time before the meeting. Yeah, but we have to get the agenda out, is what I'm saying. Oh. If you so want to add something to well, I would love to do it the first week of October, if that's possible, because that would give more. Okay, let me, okay, yeah, but let me. Um, some of these things are pretty complicated, like to figure out whether you can build a parking garage. I mean. So, Sabrina, the only conflicting day we have would be that Coastal Commission. And I just found where it is. Yeah, I, okay. just, I just looked up their schedule. And then, then give me some flexibility, which would include the first week of October, and we'll figure out the schedule for that. So we were talking October 9th. Or October 12th, because I don't know if Robert can make it and Tom can't make the money, and I want, if we're going to spend this much money and time, right. we need to have a thorough due diligence process. So, so yeah, if the first week, if the first week of October, people are saying, let me, let me just, We'll do like a doodle or something with the date. Yep, okay. I can do it the first week of October if that works for other people. Okay, perfect. So um, Steve, and Commissioner Chang, probably all commissioners, um, should it come to pass that uh, uh, staff will make a recommendation to proceed with this project, um, this is most certainly not something that this commission should rush into. And uh, so we can have as many site visits as the commission would like. We can have, uh, once we get into, if the, if the commission decides to pursue this, we can have closed sessions. Um, and certainly uh, in relation to parking, there are certain county requirements for parking and we would not, um, uh, I think it's possible to meet all of the county requirements for general assembly and uh, office space in the ratios uh, established in, in the county code. So, but but no, no, I would not be one to suggest that uh, at the October 9th or 12th uh, special meeting and site visit that we will be able to answer all questions uh, and certainly not one to suggest that at that time we'd be ready, willing, and able to make any sort of recommendation on the part of staff. Oh, I don't think anyone's expecting that. I think this okay. is part of the due diligence process. Yeah. I just want to make sure that many of us can be there as possible, which is why I want the flexibility of the schedule and in I, the first two weeks of October. I think that's great, and I also think having more than one site visit is you yeah. know, a very Smart. good idea because there's going to be plenty, I'm sure there'll be issues that come up if we seriously considered it, such as, um, you know, if we're able to provide space for community centers, which is what I believe the Board of Supervisors would like to see happen, um, and certainly a lot of public members, if that is the plan, and if the county is going to help compensate for that, which is my understanding that, that is a possibility, we want to make sure that if this space is being used by the public, that we figure out a way to deal with what are critical traffic issues at that location? Nobody would argue with that. And then also that we can accommodate enough vehicles because if we're using it for more than just an office space and there's going to be events there, and if we wanted to rent it out for events and have it be more of a community space, then we would need to be able to accommodate a large number of cars. So, you know, maybe there's a solution to that. And I'd like to hear 
what all of those ideas are, you know, in, at any time that we're considering a piece of property on the coast. So I think those are things that will take time to sort out and having, so I just see this as sort of an initial visit to understand the property lines. I know there's a house next to this property, sandwiched between a house and, and Sam's Chowder House. And the house is in the way of connecting with our parking lot. So I'm wondering, is there a way to work around that to connect with the parking lot? You know, there are a lot of questions and we just can't we, think. We're not going to rush into yeah. it. We're not going to rush into it. I think the first thing is just, we don't even know this is the right point. So we would give the general manager the direction to just ask questions and use this stuff. So I think the October, but it'll be an educational thing for me. That's that first thing. Yeah. So we're all those yeah. yeah. Okay. Commissioner, I, I hear you loud and clear. We'll, I'll work with you, the president, to uh, make sure that we can get the greatest attendance possible at a special meeting site visit, and there'll be a comprehensive report at the next meeting. Thank you. Yep, please. Oh, do you have any more, Sabrina? Nope. Okay, Tom. I mean, uh, um, I also um, met with graduate students at, and um, a C Grant fellow from UCSC. Oh. And one question I asked them, because so, let me just point out what we're talking about here so everyone really knows. They're doing a study on fisheries and so socioeconomic impact of fisheries, and, and they're collecting data. So they were they were talking to the public and the manager. I talked to them. What can come out of this is, would be useful for us is a, a report on the value of fisheries in our. Absolutely. Um, I met with the, the, the C Grant Fellow and the, and the graduate student, um, and uh, I know that they have talked with uh, members of the fishing community. Now that I'm uh, recalling the conversation yesterday, I think they said that they have met with you, um, uh, Commissioner Lorenus, and um, from me, they were looking for uh, my perspective on the, again, the socioeconomic impact of fisheries. How did fisheries relate to the surrounding community? Um, I talked of the uh, impacts, for example, when the crab season was delayed in uh, 2015 and the impact that had on the local community and uh, the way that the district and the fishing community worked together to uh, waive some fees and uh, uh, the impact that had district-wide I talked of uh, the, uh, the number of, they asked questions about the number of votes and the uh, dollars coming in. Um, I could talk very generally about the fisheries that were uh, working out of uh, the harbor, but they had more information about that uh, that they had received from uh, representatives of the fishing community. So I thought it was a from my perspective, a sort of more high-level overview of the impacts and less about um, how many people work on a boat, uh, for example. And uh, it was a very good and constructive conversation. They were uh, well prepared with a list of questions that they worked through. And uh, I'll be interested to see the report when it comes out. Um, to follow up on that, I, I was interviewed by them too. I think they talked to a lot of people. Um, and we, I mean, we talked for hours. It was, it was interesting talking with them. But one thing that came up was um, I suggested that once they had all their information compiled, it would be great if they could come give a presentation at one of our board meetings so um, the public could learn more about what they're doing and we could understand the outcome of their report. So it would be nice to have some follow up with them when.
Um, I had one other question yeah. I just thought of. Um, no, I can't remember what it was. Uh, you want to come back to the second you have in your No. Um, oh. There have been two meetings held with um, all three fish buyers and representatives of the Half Moon Bay Seafood Marketing Association in May and uh, July of this year. And um, we're getting ready to come to the board with a uh, request for approval of an RFP for the next steps in an overview of design planning for that project. When is that going to get on the agenda? Any idea? Um, uh, soon. <laughs> soon as in before you're leaving or after? Soon before the end of this year. Before the end of the year. Okay, great. That's exciting. Just, since we're on the subject, could you tell me which related staff report you're referring to? Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's just an error. Yeah, it's item number seven. seven. It's just a mistake. What? It says C related staff report. I think that's just a carryover from oh. the previous thing. There was no yes. staff report. Correct, there is no related staff report on this at this point. Any other questions or comments? No. Tom, do you have any uh, questions or comments regarding Steve's activity report? No, I don't. I'll try to take it off you. Okay, great. Um, so thank you, Steve. That was made for informational purposes. Great report. Uh, any questions or comments? from uh, the board about Anita's um, activity report, the finance, or the director of administrative services. I'll open up. Tom, do you have any questions or comments on Anita's um, activity report for August? No, they're very self-explanatory, reading them ourselves.